again, thank you so much for the panel, John, and the, uh, the great issues, I think, that have been brought up. Throughout the day, we've had so many excellent. different issues that we all have to talk really about. And my panel, in just a couple of minutes now, I like to think that we are, I'm going to deal with probably the most important people in the room in many ways, because if we don't have the, what's known as the juniors in the industry and the people that are out there exploring, then we don't have, we don't have a whole lot to go on. So let me call my panel up here. I'm delighted to have with us from the Saudi Geological Survey, Tamar Bakerman is here with us. Tamar, lovely to have you here. And I know we're going to really look forward to hearing what you have to say and make sure we hear more from you. The director of KBG Consulting, Bill Brody Good, joins us as well. Brian Hoskins is with us. He's the CEO of Golden Minerals. Um, Richard uh, Chaudet, the managing director of Minex Consulting and Al Workman, the Vice President of What's Griff McQuaid. So here we have a great panel here. These gentlemen, as I say, know what's going on and I consider them, they might be the juniors, but they're probably the most important people in the sector. So they are for this panel anyway. Gentlemen, please join me and let's see what we can do in terms of making sure that actually with all of the great plans, the great ambitions here, that you actually get to work and that you're able to start exploring. Al, if I might start with you. Probably we've been hearing it today, we've been hearing commitments from the government in one sense, but we've also been hearing, I think, appeals from you know, players in the industry too. And it's about the ease of doing business. You know, getting a license in place, making sure that you have the opportunity to get a license, but then the real work really starts. And it might not be as easy as it looks. Talk to us a little bit about how, I suppose, we have to manage expectations. Well, it's often been said that money is the, is the fuel for expo exploration, but in reality, information and, and the management of information is the fuel. Money is really just a catalyst. If you don't have information to base your decision-making process on, well, then your money's gonna be, probably gonna be wasted. Um, Part of that is managing expectations, which means that you need to get information out to your potential investors. The Saudi Geological Survey has done quite a commendable job over the years of, of building the geoscience database. And, and that, of course, is that's the framework that companies use to make their investment decisions. The survey has also done a very good job recently of getting geoscience information out into the, into the public realm through their web portal. And that has made it much, much easier for companies to decide uh, what they want to invest on, the information base for, for making those decisions, and also finding out where existing licenses are so that they could carve out an area to apply for a license. Uh, the ministry has also streamlined the approval process for licensing, so that makes it much easier. But we still come down to the fact that many of the willing investors in Saudi Arabia don't have a lot of experience in exploration. So as a consultant, I often get asked by a, by a client, how soon, can we how soon can we begin mining? And of course, we're just at the inception stage of an exploration project. So, Part of, part of our, 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 our job in, in getting information out to potential investors is not only identifying the sources of the information, but making sure that the investors understand that this is a systematic process, that, that their expectations cannot be that they're going to be mining next year. And again, I think, you know, we look at the ambitious um, you know, environment here in Saudi Arabia, and it is to be commended without a doubt. Um, but there is a danger in the, the rush to deliver that um, I think, yeah, as you said, people have to step back a little bit and just really look at the time frame and analyze what's going on. Richard, this is without a doubt a competitive industry on, on all sides. You know, you as explorers, you look around the world, you have lots of choices. Of course, you're identifying what minerals you want and all of that. But what are you looking for, I suppose, in terms of how does a country get on your, get on the investment radar, really? Yeah, good question. Um, 
there's a lot of opportunities out there in the world, and if you're a junior or a major company, uh, you're spoilt for choice. So you have to select fairly carefully which countries you're going to put your uh, exploration dollars into. And the, the, the two main factors that, uh, that any company, uh, mining company or exploration company, looks at is what's the mineral endowment? What's the potential for, for, for making a big discovery there? And that's why what El was talking about is absolutely critical to have that data so that you can actually make that decision about the quality of the opportunity. And the second component is, yes, the geology is good, but can I actually do business there? Can I get licenses, which is what El has spoken about? And equally, can I do, can I make my shareholders comfortable that this is a place where if I make a discovery, I can develop a mine and get the value out of that back to my shareholders? So they're the two main things. You've got to understand the exploration opportunity, and it's got to be compelling, and you've got to feel comfortable that whatever you do, you can uh, do business in that country. And Brian, pick up on this. Um, you know, you're, you're not worth much without a license. So basically, you, you've got to have that license in place. That's absolutely essential. And I know, you know, the Saudi government is doing a lot to change things and issues. I'm, I'm, I'm sure the deputy minister will always hold that against me that I told him that, but. The reality is, is that we are a genuine Saudi junior. Our major shareholder is a Saudi company. We have been operating in this country really since 2009. Okay. And I really pick on both of the previous comments. The first thing is, the one thing that has really been remarkable about Saudi is there is an immense amount of data in the SGS, and we've used that to build our own database and manage the way we go forward. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, you know, I've always said that in Junior's place, this is about getting your licenses. And I'm very pleased to say that the minister and the deputy minister listened to me. And in the last year, we've got 15 licenses. Okay. So we're in business. But I think the more important point that Al makes is that it's not a long term. So since 2009, we have been working in this country and we now are proud to say we've got two projects which are going into development. So at the end of this year, we will start construction on our first mine. Wow. And at the end of that construction period, we will start construction on our next mine. And that, I think, is classic junior environment where you get in, you stay the, the distance, you have the support of the government, and you can actually build value. So, you know, from my point of view, four years ago, we started with four people. Today, we're 90. At the end of the year, we'll be 500. Wow. We will be growing. And that is a junior success story for us. Absolutely. And yep. congratulations on that. We're looking forward to keeping an eye on you in the years to come because uh, it'll be a changing, a moving feast, so to speak. Well done on that. Bill, again, how important is, you know, I suppose the ease of application in getting license and getting permits, and really, I suppose the efficient management, you know, of all of that in terms of how you work with the government, the well, ministry. Coming from a junior uh, perspective, you know, your 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 funding is is often limited to to ideally put a majority into the ground. You don't really want to be yeah. spending too much time and effort and and cost to do the ancillary. Um, the, dare I say, red tape aspects of working in a country. So um, I've always believed that if you, if you have a, a, a very receptive um, environment to come into where you can literally focus the majority of your funds into the ground, into working up as a junior, working up um, your grassroots properties, um, adding value to them as quickly as possible, um, that gives your investors uh, support that your money's being spent in the right place. Um, and I think that, that is, seems to be what's happening um, and developing now, which is very encouraging. And I think from uh, what Brian was just saying, you know, the fact that the, the momentum's building, uh, and I think that's excellent for the future of the juniors coming into, into the kingdom. Um, and I feel hopefully in, in a year or, or two years' time, you know, there'll be a panel of, 15 juniors wow. sitting here mm -hmm. rather than, say, two or three. Um, and I think, you know, Brian's group and their success, you know, being tenacious is, has set the pathway. Um, and hopefully that will continue um, exponentially as we go forward. 
and that, of course, will encourage everyone else. Let me get a word here from Tamar in here. Now, we've heard some very flattering comments on the geological survey, so you must be doing something right. You've got it in place. Um, clearly, it's of huge importance, you know, to all of the juniors, and in fact, everybody looking at this market here. But talk to me about, you know, what you have in place, I suppose, you know, um, in terms of the geological survey and how this is really going to benefit many of the people in the exploration side. So the Saudi Geological Survey is conducting a regional uh, geological survey of the Arabian Shield uh, of Saudi Arabia. Uh, to, to obtain uh, detailed data, this uh, data will include uh, airborne geophysical data, uh, geochemical uh, data, and uh, detailed data of the uh, rocks and uh, the, the geological environments and the hosted rocks of Saudi Arabia. Uh, once we have uh, these data and uh, inter interpreted and uh, analyzed it, this will definitely uh, ex speed up the exploration and uh, ease up the decision making in the exploration and mining uh, sector. And again, I think that's, you know, having that data, I think, as everybody has alluded to there, is absolutely essential. Bill, if I might ask you, you know, talking about the financial incentives, and the minister talked about it today, the minister of finance talked about it, I think it's something that everybody wants to make sure they're playing a part in it, and maybe this is something a few of you can talk to too. But what financial incentives, you know, are more suitable to what you're doing at this point, making sure you know that you actually get started and be able to reinvest and keep moving. I think the the incentives, um, obviously, uh, as I said earlier, you know, finance is key in a in a junior sector to to have the right um, to have the ability to be able to to properly get on the ground and do the work on the ground, and having uh, having incentives whereby your operating costs are relatively low in terms of. Um, as I said earlier, the, the sort of you know, the corporate side of things, um, having opportunity, and I see there's there's great uh, potential now for uh, employing young young Saudi or, or not necessarily young, but but Saudi nationals in the geological um, um, sector um, and of both genders, which is uh, very exciting uh, and I think really important for the future of of the kingdom, not only in exploration but in all aspects of, of the mining sector. Um, I think it's very, it's great to have incentives in terms of um, you know, tax relief, duty. Sometimes one has to bring in equipment that's not necessarily found within the kingdom, um, and having to, you know, being having, uh, not being obliged to pay heavy duty and taxes on those sort of types of equipment that are brought in uh, would be an incentive as well. So there's there's many aspects I think to um, to having financial support. Um, to again just focus that the majority of the of the funding into the ground, into the development, into the next discovery. Mm. Um, Richard, maybe pick up on this. And we heard in the last one of the panels, just not uh, the one earlier, um, the fact there are so few players in terms of you know equity players in the market been able to actually support you, and um, particularly then in development once you get started. So, what kind of funding uh, you know do you need? What incentives work best for you? And, and again, if you can all pick up on that, but please go ahead, Richard. I guess the key point is that uh, when you're looking at uh, the exploration space, it's a mixture of large, medium and small companies. And uh, each of those have got different financial needs. The junior sector, by definition, has to raise money from its shareholders. Yes. Uh, it doesn't have a cash flow behind them. Uh, so uh, that means that they have to go back to their shareholders overseas, if that's the case at the moment, and uh, convince them that uh, Saudi Arabia is the right place to be and that you can make money out of exploration. In terms of trying to develop a local ecosystem where you've got national companies operating as explorers, the, the scene is not quite so easy because the existing stock market, which is where you'd normally raise money, doesn't cater for the junior sector. 
uh, there was a talk here before, a session before, that said that of the 200 companies listed on the stock exchange here in Saudi Arabia, only two are mining companies, and those are major operators. There is no space available or regulations uh, in place to enable junior explorers to actually operate. And I think that needs to change. Yeah, and it is, I mean, I've, it's possibly, I think, one of the key areas they will be looking at. Um, because they hear that feedback from you, I think they're beginning to realize that this needs to, to happen. And so yep. I think it is a matter of watch this space. Um, I know, um, you know you all want to come on this, but Al, talk to me again about you know, the financing incentives you know, that you'd be looking at, your clients are looking at, and what works and what will help deliver. I think there are, are a number of incentives that we have operating in Canada, um, and, and similarly in other parts of the world where the junior mining sector is very active. Uh, there certainly there are financial incentives that we have through the tax system, which might be difficult to replicate in the kingdom, although there, there may be some mechanism. I'm not, a, I'm not a financial guy. I'm a boots on the ground yeah. uh, geologist. But, but you must hear some other, frustrations out uh, there in our time. The other People saying they'd like a bit more money, so a bit yeah. more help. But you know, the other great incentive to an active junior mining sector is information. And, and what we do have in, in many of the, uh, in many areas where the junior mining sector is, is absolutely crazy, is a tremendous amount of sharing of information, either through seminars or through discussion groups. Uh, we have, all the major centers in Canada have a geological discussion group and they share information on projects. But we also have um, a system that assures the release of exploration results after two years of confidentiality. In the kingdom, it's a little different because as long as you hold a license, that information is confidential. And I know that there are many at the Saudi Geological Survey that would like to see these reports come open so that even the survey has access to them after perhaps two years or three years. That information mm. is a tremendous catalyst for junior companies seeking, you know, what somebody else found or what somebody else is doing. That's, a, that's just a tremendous boost to the whole sector. And again, just stay with me on this for a moment because that information in this industry, I suppose, you know, it, it's not the most caring sharing industry in one sense. If you've got your information, you've got your uh, resources, you want to hold on tight to that. You don't necessarily want everybody to hear. But again, there's so much information out there that's not competitive, that should be shared. I think we're seeing this in other industries. Can it work there? I'll bring you in on this, Tom, in a minute. I think it could. It's, it's certainly the industry is very, very competitive. Uh, and companies and individuals don't release information that they view as critical yes. to their own interests. So they'll talk in generalities, but our system guarantees that reports filed with the government do come open after a, a short period of time. And our exchanges also require continuous disclosure of, of exploration results that are material to the company. So if you're a junior company and you have some 100 meter intersection yes. of high grade mineralization, that has to be released almost immediately. Brian, did you want to come in on this before I come to Tamar? Did you want to? Well, I'm kind of in mixed view on it. Right, that's fair we've, enough. We've spent $35 million <laughs> on exploration. Yes. And I'm not, that's our information. You're we've not going to give away the family cell. nine years building a database. I'm not going to give it to anybody else. <laughs> you know, this is our competitive edge. This is the business we're in. And if anybody else wants to come, we'll talk to them. Right. We'll help them. We'll tell them the pitfalls. But I'm not going to give them my information. Yeah, it's yeah. ours. I just want to make a point that Bill made, talking about young Saudi geologists. We have eight Saudi geologists working for us. And I can tell you one thing. They're fantastic. Mm. So. In terms of skills and availability, we, here are the fundamental building blocks to build a great junior mining yes. sector. And the people skills are there. I think the land is there. The information is there. I think it comes back to the point that Bill made, which is about money. Junior explorers are cash hungry. 
I've told you how much we've spent over the last 10 years. That money has all come from shareholders. Now, where do shareholders get? At the moment, they get it outside the country. But one of the things I do know about Saudi is there's an immense amount of locked up capital. If there was a market that was appropriate for it, I'm sure that that money would come in. So we talk about juniors, and I take your, the point you made in the beginning that juniors are the lifeblood of an exploration business. The, the seniors only come when we've showed the way. It's, it's true in everywhere else in the world. No, so no, if absolutely. the juniors are not there, then forget about it. Yeah. You, you, I think you guys, yes, exactly, do the hard work. Coming back to just perhaps comment on um, this in terms of okay information, but you know, we talk about Saudi Arabia being the, the land of greenfield opportunities. And you know, everybody, and we've heard it throughout the day, there needs to be better financial incentives and more support, I think, from the government. What can you do? What do you see the government doing that is actually hopefully going to answer a few questions here, keep people happy? Considering the significant potential of the Arabian Shield, uh, the kingdom is offering a uh, different variety of uh, financial incentives, such as uh, up to 75% of uh, co-funding for the mining projects and 30% uh, of the 30% uh, 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 reduction for the uh, uh, downstream uh, business. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we will, uh, the kingdom will offer uh, f more incentives, a variety of incentives. Uh, one of, any of the initiatives uh, that uh, we are uh, planning uh, to uh, announce uh, this year is the incubator, uh, exploration incubator in initiative. It's a cashless. Uh, project, uh, initiative, a hub for uh, explorers to uh, raise uh, knowledge and uh, have uh, also different uh, knowledge sharing and uh, uh, sharing the studies and expertise and uh, matchmaking between uh, explorers and, uh, and investors. Good. I mean, and I think things will speed up here. And I think even if you look back a couple of years to see what has been happening, um, you know, it is it is important and things are happening. Bill, stay with, um, you know, the availability of the workforce. And earlier we had one of the, the key educational institutions on. And again, the fact that Saudi is also investing their money into educating the younger Saudis here and His Royal Highness the Prince very much talked about that too, and the focus that there is on making sure that this is a vibrant industry for a lot of the young people here. Great to hear Brian say he's got some people on board, so it's, it's beginning to happen. But how important is this, and how important is, we've heard a little bit about you know, diversification in the industry today too, which is, I think, very encouraging. Absolutely, and I think one of the key things is, a, um, you know, as junior explorers, we're bringing a skill set that might not exist at the moment into the kingdom. Um, everyone, you know, personally, 30 years of, of exploring in different terrains for different commodities. But there's an accumulation of, of experience and knowledge from everybody here that part of our job as a junior is also to, to share that knowledge and bringing in, you know, local you know, graduates, uh, recent graduates um, that, that are, are keen and hungry to learn and one day, it's, I, I've always sort of talked to all the projects I've worked on um, as, a, as an expat coming in, is that uh, part of the, the goal is to finally be able to hand the keys over to the local, um, the local workforce. So you're teaching them all the aspects, say from my point of view as a, as a young, young geologist coming in, you teach them the, the right methods of how to do that basic exploration work with the environmental, with the ESG aspects that are required. You do that from the start. You give them that foundation, and then hopefully you can let them loose on, on you know, the area, the expertise area they might decide is, is their field, be it um, on, the, on the data side, be it on uh, you know, being a, a very technical geologist, uh, being it on the operations, logistics, um, relationships with the, you know, with the SGS. Uh, whatever it may be, but I think it's it's key and personally and I think 
probably my colleagues here as well would agree that um, it's a great opportunity to, to pass these skills on because um, you know, one day we will all stop and we'd hope the next generation take a little bit of what we, we've provided and, and, and put into the system uh, and they take it to the next level. Richard, please. Yeah, I'd like to amplify on that point and say not only should we be transferring technical skills to the local people, but also the commercial skills, because this is the generation of entrepreneurs who are going to build the next, the next set of mines and companies. So not only teaching them the technical stuff, but the commercial stuff as well. Absolutely, and I think we see, you know, the educational system gearing up for new industry that's here, and this is going to be, without a doubt, a very lucrative industry. We look at the demand side, and it's huge. And we look at the supply side here, and from some of the surveys and everything that's out there, this is pretty healthy as well. So yep. it's not a bad picture. And the other comment I would make is that in terms of junior companies operating in country, you find that the local companies tend to be a lot more rusted on. They're less likely to be footloose and move to another country. Yes. So a Canadian company coming to Saudi might stay for two or three years. If they have no success, they'll move on. But a Saudi-based company will be here forever. How can a Saudi-based company, perhaps a, you know, a local company, actually help in terms of, I don't know, perhaps joint ventures in that? Because they'll probably have access to capital, and that's what you would like to see built up here. So we don't see that happening yet, do we? But the potential sounds good. Um, do you yeah. want to just mention local, and what? then I'll go to Brian? Yeah. But Richard, no, you want very, to very much so. And I mean, you know, we have a, 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 a high net worth Saudi family who have been a, a really dogged supporter, and I'd use the word advisedly dogged supporter. So, uh, and they've been with us. And I think that one of the things I've said previously, and I'll say it again, is that the local business community, the private community, are watching our success. And if we're successful, they will come in. I, I've always maintained in this, this game, you know, I begin asked, but what can we do to bring services in? And I say, just give me a business and they will come and bring their services to me. So we're the drivers. And, and I think I want to bring in a, a, another point, which you know, I always want to make. Juniors discover, mm. majors mine. And if you want to build a vibrant industry, you have to bring your discoverers in. Discoverers, because the cost and effort is there, but for discoverers, the rewards are enormous. And I think that there are some international examples. South Australia, for example, wanted to encourage their industry. So what they did was they said, dollar for dollar, we'll back you. So if you spend a dollar on the ground, we'll give you the dollar to match it. The same thing happened in Canada, if I'm not mistaken, where they said, how do we promote the industry and they did it through the pension funds. So they gave, they gave incentives into it where you actually are attracting money in, in a way which allows the juniors to carry on. You don't need a secondary market, yes. but you do need those kinds of systems here in country which will encourage the juniors to come. We're very cash hungry, but we spend it wisely. And I suppose that then, it, you know, it, it gives ownership to, to everybody in a way and yep. that sense of responsibility. And um, we don't have a whole lot of time, but a few other areas we want to talk about. Coming back, Richard, to the fact you're in country, the support you need once you're here, once you've established, and then you move on to, I suppose, that development phase here. What are, maybe if there are still a few challenges out there, what would you call out to say, this is what we need to work on? Well, I'd like to pick up on... on Please, go ahead, Al. Yeah, what, what Brian said, um, that juniors, you know, discover mines. If you look at the number of large, very large companies in the world, you could, you could probably list them on one hand, and if not one, two. Whereas there are thousands and thousands of junior companies. So the junior sector, you know, is, is vibrant, energetic, uh, and needs to be encouraged, and success breeds success, which is basically mm. the point Brian was making. But again, I mean, you know, we look at, I think, the, the ambition here and the fact that, you know, Saudi wants to do so much here. This is, it's high risk, high reward, but you talk about so many juniors out there. Um, I don't know who wants to pick up on this. Let me just see. Maybe you can continue, Al, I'll bring it to you. Um, 
you know, everything you drill is not, it's, it's not all, uh, all that's glittering out there is not necessarily gold or copper or whatever it <laughs> needs to be. So this is trial and error. There's a lot of work to be put there. You know, and again, somebody mentioned it in another panel, the patience that's needed, the support that's needed. It's a long-term game. You have to be committed and the funding has to be committed and people have to believe in what you're doing. Yeah, it's a high risk, high reward game. Uh, as a rough rule of thumb, and I do these sort of statistics on a regular basis, even for a small discovery um, or a modest discovery, there's probably only one chance in a hundred that there, any individual project will be successful. If you're looking for a sort of a Jabil Sayed type discovery, there's probably one chance in a thousand that a project will deliver that. So what it means is that you have to roll the dice many, many, many times. And you can't do that with one or two companies. You need to have a lot of companies, and they have to be persistent, and they have to have lots of different ideas. So you need to be prepared to take the long-term view and prepared to back the industry over several years, if not a decade or more. Brian. <laughs> you could see that I wanted could, to say I something. See, yeah, you yeah, want to get I've in got there. that buzz about me. <laughs> well, you talk about one in a hundred. Just to let you know how prospective Saudi is, we had five licenses in the 10 years. We made two discoveries. Okay. Both of those discoveries are going to become mines. That's a 40% success rate. There is nowhere else in the world that I've come across that success rate. So this is the place to be. Mm. I think that the second thing is the regulatory framework has now been fixed and it works. The workforce is here. This is a first world country. I have two double highways within 15 kilometers of my project. So everything is here. Now we just got to open the gates to bring in all of the people who've got the energy and the enthusiasm to pick up that ground and discover more. Yeah, it is. It's, it's an exciting time at the moment. Yeah. And for us, um, our exciting time on stage is sadly coming close to an end. So if I can have you wrap it up, and I suppose if there's a call for action, I'll get it from each of you, or what do you need to happen, I suppose, in the short term to make sure that that long-term game is profitable for everybody and it becomes a win-win. Al, what would you say in terms of you know, the call to action here? What do you need, uh, what would make your life easier? Oh, I think, I think the, um, the kingdom needs to get the word out. Uh, it needs to participate, not just attend, but it needs to participate in major conventions. And, and we have the Prospectors and Developers Convention coming up in Toronto, uh, the Vancouver Roundup Convention as well. It would mean actually having the Saudi Geological Survey with a booth, with presentation, with documentation, with perhaps a, 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 a GIS screen set up so that you can actually demonstrate mineral belts and, and the location of mines and deposits so that people can actually touch things. And, and uh, if I could use an example, Peru over the last 10 years has done an excellent job of, of that very thing with a very large, very prominent display. I think the kingdom needs to, needs to be doing that kind of thing. This forum is an excellent, excellent start. And I'm, I'm very, after, after participating last year in a virtual sense, I, I'm very pleased to see how this has developed. I'm, I'm, I'm quite amazed by it. Yeah. But, but reaching out and attending the major, um, and participating in presentations at conventions, that's very important. Without a doubt. I mean, it's fine to be talking here at home about wanting to put Saudi Arabia on the international map, but it put is it about now taking that action. Richard. Very quickly, I, I agree with what Al says. The geology needs to be emphasized. But from my perspective, the one, shop, one item out of the shopping list that I would put up would be the need to create a secondary market on the stock exchange for, for, the, for the mining sector, to raise those money and generate the interest <coughs> in the sector. Yeah, and you can I mean, immediately see what a big difference that would make. Yeah. Um, Brian, a, a call to action if there is one on your part. No, I, I think we're already in action. <laughs> You're there. I, I think that all of the changes that have taken yes. place over the last four years have really stimulated it. So, you know, the call to action might be in areas where there's a little squeaky wheel, but this is great. It's going. I'm a happy bunny. So. <laughs> and that's good to hear, and the fact that things are going well, we'll be looking forward to hearing more. Um, 
uh, Bill, you know, and we've talked about this, this conference, how important it is, but also I like what Al is saying, really, you know, to, to get Saudi out there as a household name in the mining, because I have many people, you know, ask the same question, you know, why, why Saudi? What's going on there? Yeah, I think, um, you know, my three colleagues, I agree 100% what they're saying. Just give, give the juniors the opportunity, o really open that door, um, give them the, the ease to, to pick up ground, obviously monitor and make sure that the people picking up the ground actually do some work. And obviously, as a junior, you're, you're limited in your funding. So, so be patient, but be, you know, be, be cognizant that, that uh, a gradual process is needed, depending on the, on the condition and, and the historical information available on certain pieces of ground. Um, and, and have that time frame. I think, um, Richard, you mentioned 10 years plus. Absolutely, it's not going to happen tomorrow. But once they start, juniors start coming in, I think you'll see a huge difference. And don't discard the small discoveries, because the small discoveries can be quite critical to get that ball rolling for more juniors. And small discoveries can often lead to larger on-strike, uh, um, uh, on-depth discoveries that, that were never even considered. Yes, yes. And once that, I think, dynamics, once that really starts, the momentum is there. Yeah. And as you say, you know, to see success from you, it comes beyond that. Tamar, a closing word, because the uh, Saudi Geological Survey, you're, you're busy consulting with people, you're working with everybody. Just tell us what we can expect from you next. Well, glad to hear that uh, about the conference and the uh, uh, initiatives in general from the mining sector in the kingdom. Uh, again, the presence of uh, s such uh, quality data, the legacy data, and the detailed uh, newly obtained uh, data in one place uh, in the National Geological Database and making it easily accessible uh, for everyone uh, will uh, definitely uh, help and will attract uh, more uh, explorer players, uh, global players and uh, investors as well. Uh, you have having a workshop too, I believe. Uh, yes, exactly. Tomorrow we, there, there will be a workshop uh, matchmaking event for explorers and the uh, financially uh, supporter. Uh, it's it's going to be within the, uh, fi uh, the mining opportunity stand in the market base area. And uh, again, uh, I would uh, encourage everyone to use the resources available and uh, g keep giving the feedback and uh, let's keep the dialogue open. And we, it's, then uh, we can easily uh, uh, improve the services uh, based on the needs of the investors and explorers. And again, keep getting that feedback. You mightn't get all of Brian's secret details, but you'll get a bit from him. He'll give, <laughs> he'll give us a little bit. Um, but, uh, you know, well done to you. To, a little bit. Okay, maybe, maybe not much, but at least he will encourage everybody else to share. I want to thank you all, gentlemen, so much. Um, Al, Richard. Brian, thank you so much. Bill and Tamar, thank you so much you. for your input into this. And uh, I think we're, uh, it's encouraging. Once we have more of the juniors in and we have more of the explorers, then the rest just moves rapidly. Gentlemen, thank you so much.